This is Film Podcast. Film Podcast. Film Podcast. The official podcast of Film Book. Get ready for the latest in film news, TV show news, and theatrical reviews. Film Book's podcast starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Film Bookcast, the official podcast of Film Book. My name is Chris Banks. If you're tuning in for the first time, what I do on Film Bookcast, I discuss the latest film and TV show news. I also review an in theater film sometimes. You can find more about Film Bookcast on film book.com by using the search term Film Bookcast. You can also email us at podcast at film book.com with Film Bookcast in the subject line. Let's Let's jump right into it this week. Now let's jump to some movie news from this week. I think one of the most interesting pieces of film news that came out this week revealed to us that Amazon is behind a new film from Ben Affleck and Matt Damon titled Air. It's a film that centers on the real-life shoe salesman Sonny Varaco and how he led Nike on its pursuit of basketball phenom Michael Jordan. So Amazon is the is the distributor for this film, and they're doing something that's going to put a lot of pressure, I think, on Netflix and Apple TV. TV going forward, Jeff Bezos is a big fan of American cinema, and I'm kind of hoping that he puts a lot of money behind the rejuvenation of modern day cinemas. So for his new film, Air, I mean, for the new Ben Affleck, Matt Damon film, Air, he's going to put it on 3,000 cinemas domestically before its release on Amazon Prime. It's going to debut in theaters April 5th, and it's going to have an exclusive theatrical run. Air will then move to Prime as a digital release, but it's a really big swing. It's, I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on Netflix and Apple to really start to do similar things. Lots of love to Warner Brothers and, and Bezos for, for going this way, because this is what this is a good piece of news from cinemas. Some more movie news from this week. Knock at, Knock at the Cabin, M. Night Shyamalan's newest movie, opened up this week to just under $2 million at its preview opening. The film was being played on over 3,000 theaters in North America, and 80 for Brady earned a, earned close to a million dollars on its preview day. Very hopeful news for cinemas. Rounding out this week in movie news is some casting news as Tony Collette is set to star alongside Odessa Young in a film titled The Prima Donna. It's written and directed by Nathan Silver, and it's being billed as a delightfully twisted and darkly funny revenge thriller about a dysfunctional family dynamic, the danger of ambition, and the lengths we will all go to to make a mark on the world. The film will reunite Colette and Young, who previously worked together on the HBO series The Staircase. That's it for film news from this week. Now let's check out some TV news from this week. Following a strong start, Night Court is staying in session at NBC. The network has already picked up a second season of the comedy. It's a sequel to the original show that ran from 1984 to 1992, and it stars the Big Bang Theory's alums Melissa and John. The show's premiere delivered NBC's biggest comedy audience in more than five years. Exciting news for fans of Night Court. Some more TV news from this week. Fans of Full House alum Jody Sweden and Stand By Me star Will Wheaton are among the slate of voice actors set to star in a new animated series titled Grubs. The cast is stacked and it's adapted from a series of graphic novels by cartoonist Max Weaver. Grubs centers around an eight-year-old, Billy, for whose penchant for mischief is enabled by the support of his imaginary friend Tyler. As Grubs' shenanigans escalate, his father, sister, teacher, and principal are all caught in the crossfire. Exciting news for fans like me of the original Grubbs books. I love how they're doing all these books. Lastly, this week in TV news, there's a new Netflix limited series that's going to come out titled Eric, and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch. The show finally rounded out its six-episode cast this week, with Cumberbatch being joined by Gabby Hoffman, Dan Folger, Clark Peters, Phoebe Nichols, David Denham, and so many more. The series is set in 1980s New York, and it follows the desperate search of a father when his nine-year-old son disappears one morning on the way to school. Vincent, who's played by Cumberbatch, is one of New York's leading puppeteers and creator of a hugely popular children's television show, Good Day Sunshine. He struggles to cope with the loss of his son. As Vincent's progressively destructive behavior alienates his family, his work colleagues, and the detectives trying to help him, it's Eric, a delusion of of necessity, who becomes his only ally in the pursuit to bring his son home. Very exciting TV news. I'll be looking forward to Eric, that's for sure. That's it for TV news from this week. Now let's see what came out at home this week. Bones and All is now available on DVD. 
Marin is a 17-year-old high school student who abruptly discovers that he's a special kind of vampire called an eater. Unlike a regular vampire, he is not undead, does not thirst for blood, and does not need to avoid sunlight. However, he has an insatiable urge to eat human flesh. After he discovers he's a cousin to vampires, Marin is forced to go on the run after eating the fingers of a high school friend. Now alone and fleeing authorities, Marin meets other eaters as he tries to make sense of his new strange life. Bones and All is now available on DVD. Angry Neighbors is now available on DVD. Harry is an acclaimed retired novelist who lives a quiet life on an island in the Hamptons. He's also a very grumpy individual who refuses to read other writers' unpublished works and enters into regular arguments with his white terrier, Hector, who he hears talking to him. Of course, Hector is a capitalist and born-again Christian, which is why he and Harry often have disagreements. When his neighbor Kevin is a multimillionaire who bought land across from his home, decides to loudly build a huge mega-sized mansion, Harry decides that the end of the world is almost here. The mansion and Kevin represent everything that's wrong with the world. With these thoughts in mind, Harry decides that he must do everything he can to stop Kevin and his plans. Angry Neighbors is now available on DVD. That's it for at-home releases from this week. This week in movie trailers, Jake Gyllenhaal stars in a new film titled The Covenant. It's by MGM and it's set to hit theaters April 21st. Gyllenhaal stars as Army Sergeant John Kinley, who's rescued during a tour in Afghanistan by his interpreter, played by Dar Salim. The trailer shows Sergeant grappling with whether to put himself back in harm's way to rescue Ahmed. Check out the trailer for The Covenant. It'll debut in theaters April 21st. Another really powerful trailer that debuted this week comes from Sony Pictures, and it's titled Big George Foreman. It's set to hit theaters April 28th, and it's really a biographical movie about George Foreman. Up until Foreman's 1974 battle with Muhammad Ali, known as the Rumble in the Jungle, George Foreman was undefeated in the ring. Fueled by an impoverished childhood, Foreman channeled his anger into becoming an Olympic gold medalist and world heavyweight champion. Following a near-death experience that took him out of the boxing ring and into the pulpit, Big George Foreman looks to bring his incredible story to audiences. Check out the trailer for Big George Foreman. It'll be in theaters April 28th. The last movie trailer we'll talk about this week is a horror movie titled The Reading. Recently widowed author Emma Leiden has agreed to a stage reading of, by a 19-year-old Sky Brown. To promote, to promote her new book, Invasion, which details the horrific and traumatic loss of her family during an attack she barely survived. Quickly, those involved in the stage reading learn that Skye's spiritual connection is real, and an unexpected evil emerges in a house they can't escape. Check out the trailer for the reading. That's it for movie trailers from this week. That's it for movie trailers from this week. Now let's check out some TV trailers from this week. HBO released the first look of its upcoming limited series, The Palace. It stars Kate Winslet. It tells the story of one year within the walls of the palace of a modern European regime as it begins to unravel. Check out the trailer for The Palace. It's directed by Stephen Frears and Jessica Hobbs. Some more TV news. ABC announced Alaska Daily will return for its winter premiere on March 2nd at 10 p.m. Eastern. The return episode, entitled Enemy of the People, will be followed by four consecutive episodes, with the season finale set for March 30th. It stars Hilary Swank, who received a Golden Globe nomination for her portrayal. Lastly this week, HBO Max and Discovery Plus announced that the upcoming documentary For All Mankind will premiere on both streaming services February 5th at 9 p.m. For All Mankind was first inspired by overlapping events in 2020, when the first crewed NASA SpaceX mission took flight, took flight just as the country erupted into an outrage following the murder of George Floyd. The film explores the events of 2020 and 1969, with each year's success in science, technology, and innovation for the U.S. In addition to the country's advancement, both 2020 and 1969 were riddled with civil unrest. For All Mankind looks to reflect on how the country was faced with contradictions of success and failure in the, in the areas of human spaceflight and human rights. Exciting news for fans like me of documentaries. That's it for TV. All right. Time for this week's movie review. For this week's movie review, I'm a little late to it, but we're checking out She Said, directed by Maria Schreider. Directed by Maria Schrader, starring Carrie Mulligan, Zoe Kazan, Patricia Clarkson, and so many others. The two main stars star as New York Times reporter Megan Tolley and Jody Cantor, who together blo- broke one of the most important stories in a generation, a story that helped propel the Me Too movement and shattered decades of silence 
around the subject of sexual assault in Hollywood, and it altered American culture forever. That is a very bare-bones way of describing a, a, a grand film, like she said. I haven't watched a movie for a little bit that I don't think a minute of she said is wasted. It is so well done. The acting is powerful. The directing and, and cinematography and construction of the piece is stellar. The story, what they're talking about, is once in a generation. You know, this... I'm, I'm very happy that she said really dives into the ugliness of being a journalist. You know, because it's not all, it's not, you get to go on these women journ these women's journey of not only creating this piece, dealing with the difficulty and the, the, really the internal trauma that reporting is and can provide to people. Because when you're unearthing profound factual details that have happened to someone else or in someone else's life or in our society or whatever, it affects you you know and when i mean i'm the biggest lover of 90s movies right i was born in the 90s grew up watching merrimax films it took me a long time to understand the depth and the evil and the carnage that harvey weinstein left behind him right i mean we get to enjoy the films that his studio made but really what was going on behind the scenes was absolute the worst horror film will never touch the horror that went on in that man's life and toward all of these women that maria does such a beautiful job in showing us right because a lot of the commentary that is in this film that is in she said a lot of the survivors quotes are actually quoted from their mouths a lot of this stuff comes from the factual record and that's what makes a film so powerful and that's why she said is so good because maria and the actors you know carrie mulligan is amazing but equally zoe kazan is tremendously powerful in her presentation of how much it means to be a journalist right how much it how the toll that it takes on you to actually do this work and we kind of you know we as citizens as kids as people who are busy living our lives don't really appreciate the dirty work journalists do to teach us what is going on in the world, right? And these two journalists, Megan and Jody, changed the world. They changed the world in every way. It just, the, the ramifications of this stuff destroyed an industry. And we're all kind of living and picking up the pieces of all of it. You know, our society hasn't even begun to get itself together again or even understand how insane certain things men do are. But that's what she said really gives you a front row view to see. So much that we take for granted has a profoundly negative impact on other people, right? That's a general statement. It should be applied to everything that everybody does, right? Because when you see the character of Harvey Weinstein appear in this film, you never see his face. You never see anything but the back of his head and the back of his body for a very powerful reason. Because too often in our society, we give power to people who deserve no time, right? And when you feed into evil, when you amplify lies, when you excuse abuse and criminality and all this bad stuff that we see go on, you create more of it. You ensure that more of it will happen. So Maria, by not putting Weinstein in the film, takes all of the power he never should have had away from him. But we as an audience still get to learn how one yields that kind of power, right? Because he is, it's shown very clearly in the film, once Harvey started to see that the walls were actually closing in, Harvey did even more disgusting things. And that's really what shows us the type of person somebody else is, is when shit hits the fan, how do they react? Because Weinstein continued to try to lie, continued to try to coerce and suppress and manipulate and abuse. That's why he's in jail, because you can't, you never stop abusing. When you're an abuse, when, you, when you're an abusive person, you never stop until you physically are restrained from abusing and harming. Weinstein is one of many, many men in this country who should be in prison. And they're not because they have too much money, right? When you have, even Weinstein got to skate for a long period of time because he had enough money. And when you have enough money in this country, you have enough influence to skew and, and tilt the balance of justice. 
right? I can't underscore how powerful and incredible of a job she said is. Not just for what it's talking about, how it's done, how the actors do their job, how the camera moves. Everything about this film is A plus stuff. It is an A plus movie. Everybody needs to, needs to see and really digest and understand, she said, right? The problem with these this kind of movie and this kind of moment in our society was that it actually makes people who are abusive in their behavior or in their perceptions really kind of get defensive really really quickly that's the that's the problem with calling people out on their lies is that it actually makes people defensive the more we can learn from this kind of thing the more we can ensure and protect one another from it ever happening again you know that's kind of why you need to pay attention to she said so deeply and not react not feel really but just feel empathy and listen because there's a lot of things that men do that aren't cool and we have to kind of get out of that toxic cycle of like projecting and and further abusing or try to manipulate what other people do we got to stop doing that but we all have to learn from stuff like this like a moment like me too should have taught so many people, everybody over 17, so much. <laughs> you know, like when, when something like this comes to light and someone like Harvey goes down and the ramifications essentially destroy the entire industry of Hollywood, it is a real wake-up call to all of us, to anybody who works in the industry, anybody who wants to work in the industry, any man relating to a woman. We need to learn from this. We all need to learn from this. And She Said is an incredible film. Congratulations to everybody in it, especially the the director, the production team. It's a very good work, and everybody should see She Said. And I hope you like it as much as I did. Thanks so much for checking us out this week. Thanks so much for checking us out. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Book Cast. You can find more of my work on film-book.com. Just search for Chris Banks or Film Book Cast. You can also find me on Twitter at C Banksy, S E E Banksy. I'm also on Instagram at the Chris Banks. If you listen to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you're listening to this podcast on our YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment in the comment section. It really helps people discover our podcast. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on patreon.com slash filmbook. Your support helps us create more engaging content. You'll find our Patreon link below in the description. If you want to tweet about this podcast, just use the hashtag FilmBookCast. Tune in next week for the next episode of the FilmBookCast. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you then.